Sensor size seems to be one of the most confusing pieces of terminology for new photographers to grasp. This is not because it's difficult to understand. Simply put, sensor size is the physical size of the digital sensor used to capture images. One reason it is so confusing is because it affects field of view and depth of field, two other pieces of terminology we will cover in future lessons. Another reason it can be confusing is because until the digital photography revolution, most people who had interchangeable lens cameras overwhelmingly shot one format, 35mm roll film. 35mm film has been in use since 1889, but it was not widely adopted in its popular canister format until 1934. It is still widely available in this format today. There have always been other film formats out there. Many are still in use today, but none truly rivaled 35mm film. Let's have a brief look at some of the popular film formats that are still in use today, mostly. Sheet film, which is used in medium and large format cameras, is still in use today in many different sizes. The most popular is 4 inches by 5 inches. We'll next discuss two formats, simply because they're essentially the same, 120 and 220. 120 was originally introduced in 1901 for the Kodak Brownie. 220 was introduced in 1965. It is the same width as 120, but double its length, giving twice as many exposures. Additionally, 120 has a paper backing while 220 does not have any backing paper. This allows 220, with its double length and double exposures, to fit in the same size roll as 120. 127 was introduced in 1912 alongside the Vest Pocket Kodak folding camera. It's slightly smaller than 120 and slightly larger than 35mm, putting it in place between 35mm and medium format cameras. Then there's 110, roughly half the size of 35mm at 17 by 13 mm and introduced in 1972 in response to consumer complaints about loading traditional roll films, it is still in use today and is well known for the grainy, unsharp images commonly found in 1980s photo albums. It wasn't until the advanced photo system was introduced in 1996 that there was a legitimate and commercially backed consumer alternative to 35mm film cameras. The advanced photo system was an attempt at a major upgrade of photographic technology for amateurs. Advanced photo system film was 24mm wide, smaller than 35mm, but it came in easy to load canisters that had visual indicators on the bottom to let the photographer know the status of the roll of film without having to rewind what could be a partially exposed roll. Most advanced photo system cameras could shoot in three different image formats. H, for high definition, had an aspect ratio of 16 to 9, like today's HD and UHD TVs. It produced 4 inch by 7 inch prints. C, for classic, had an aspect ratio of 3 to 2, just like 35mm film, and produced 4 inch by 6 inch prints. P, for panoramic, had an aspect ratio of 3 to 1, and produced 4 inch by 11 inch prints. What's important to understand is that both the classic and panoramic images were simply cropped formats of the high definition image. In addition to a wide variety of point and shoot cameras, several SLRs were created for the advanced photo system. These included the Nikon Pronia, the Canon Rebel 9, and the Minolta Vectis systems. Advanced photo system cameras were largely abandoned by 2006. Kodak and Fuji, the last advanced photo system film producers, abandoned the format entirely in 2011. The decline of the advanced photo system was due largely to the growing popularity of digital cameras and the lack of adoption by professional photographers. So why the dissertation on film sizes, and why so much focus on the advanced photo system? The discussion on film sizes is to emphasize how important the 35mm film format has been over the past 100 years. While all of the other formats, save the advanced photo system, are still in use today, most amateur photographers have never even heard of them. The importance of 35mm film, particularly in SLR and compact cameras that the general public would use, is the sole reason that today's digital cameras, with a sensor size equivalent to 35mm film, are referred to as full frame. And the emphasis on the advanced photo system? In case you didn't notice, the initials for advanced photo system are A, P, S. And the classic format was commonly referred to as APS-C. 
If that sounds familiar, it's because many of today's digital SLRs, mirrorless cameras, and even some bridge cameras have APS-C format sensors. Back in 1999 and 2001, when Nikon and Canon introduced their first digital SLRs, the cost to produce the large silicon chips used for image sensors was extremely high. So high, in fact, it prohibited them from building sensors the size of a 35mm frame. However, both manufacturers had experience building cameras for the smaller APS format. For this reason, the first professional digital SLRs had APS size sensors. For the D1, Nikon chose a format close to the size of APS-C. For the 1D, Canon chose a format closer to APS-H. By 2004, both manufacturers had produced consumer digital SLRs. Both the Canon Rebel and the Nikon D70 had APS-C size sensors. Canon held on to the APS-H format for their professional D1 series until the 1D Mark IV released in 2009. The APS-C format has held on to this day and shows no sign of being replaced in the future. Now that we know the importance of 35mm film and its counterpart full-frame digital sensor, along with APS-C sensors, there are several other sensor formats that we need to be aware of. See, unlike with film cameras, digital camera manufacturers have never been forced into a single format for their digital sensors. There really is no limitation on the size of a sensor that today's manufacturers use for their cameras outside of cost. For this reason, there are far more choices regarding sensor size in digital cameras. Most camera manufacturers today are using standardized sensor formats that were derived from common film formats. There are, however, many smaller standard sizes that are not directly tied to a film format. These formats are typically used in compact point-and-shoot cameras, bridge cameras, cell phone cameras, action cameras, and drones.